Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. You're looking at a high pressure fuel pump overdrive system for an N54 powered BMW. We're gonna talk about it and I'm gonna show you how to install it today. So this particular kit is currently in development. It's a new offering for the N54. If you're making over around 450 wheel, uh, closer to 500 wheel, you're gonna run out of fuel with your stock fuel system unless you either go port injection or find a way to overdrive your high pressure fuel pump. And th that's what this is. This isn't actually released yet, but it's coming out. I got it from a company named School Performance. Uh, this is their four to one kit. So for every one rotation, you get four rotations on the backside. They're gonna offer a three times kit. I got this for availability reasons. That's what they had available at the time. But the benefit is we can push the limit with this one uh, a little further to see, you know, proof of concept to see how it holds up. So I'm hoping maybe by going with the four times kit, I can run fully 85. Um, and, you know, we'll kind of test this out to see what it's capable of. This is offered by a company named Spool Performance. They're located in the Houston area. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can check out their website. So if anybody's wondering why I bought this, I recently upgraded my turbos and I ran out of fuel. And I'm liking this system over port injection because it's technically a little safer in my opinion. Part of doing the upgrade is removing the fuel filter that's in your high pressure fuel pump. So we're gonna be installing a 10 micron filter sold by Spool as part of this process, just to ensure that we don't clog up our injectors and get leaky injectors, which can eventually cause your typical symptoms of rough, cold starts, etc. This is not yet out, but it's going to be out shortly and you'll find it in the description again. The kit comes with longer bolts to attach your high pressure fuel pump to, and it comes with a new fuel line to feed the rail. If you guys are only aiming for about 600 wheel horsepower and you're gonna run a mixture of E50 and not fully 85, you can probably get away with their three times version. But this is definitely new product. It's a new offering. It's really neat to have something like this available. So the benefit, in my opinion, of this system is ECU still remains in full control. You're just bumping up the pressure on the high side versus going with port injection, which you either run on a standalone or a small little module that technically may still spray fuel, even though the ECU doesn't want that. Sure, you can deactivate the coil with MHD and some updates, but still there's nothing like having full control on your ECU and this allows for that. In terms of the concept of overdriving your HPFP and whether or not it's gonna degrade faster, from what I've gathered, it's not necessarily a surefire thing that just because you're driving it three or four times faster, it's gonna fail three or four times faster. They did update the pump along the way. So back in the day, there was a bunch of iterations of the HPFP because they kept failing. They got around all that and they made it really robust and you may not even see much of a degradation in life expectancy by doing this. There's another company out there that makes a belt-driven, overdriven system. I believe it's three times. People have been running that for a couple of years and it doesn't necessarily need to guaranteed shortened life expectancy. But I'm here to be the guinea pig and put some content out for you guys. So we'll find out. You'll definitely hear from me if my HPFP fails just because I put this in. But I'm running out of fuel now. I have to do something, either port injection or this. And this looks like it's way easier to install. And it's something new to show you guys. So I'm excited for that. So I'm gonna remove the snorkel, air filters, anything that would seem like it would be in the way to get the manifold off to see where we're gonna be working. Two T20 torques for those. This charge pipe has to come off. I'm gonna remove this vacuum line. There's a little push pin here to remove this. So I have an aftermarket charge pipe. So this may look a little different than yours, but if you're at the point where you need to do this upgrade, chances are you already have an aftermarket charge pipe. And yes, if anybody's wondering, I need to upgrade those diverter valves. I'm gonna undo these uh, throttle body bolts.
so it's hard to show on camera, but there's a plastic push pin. This line here, you squeeze on it and then you can slide it off the throttle body. And then over here on the underside, there's one harness right here that you got to unplug. I'm going to take the engine cover off now. You got to unplug your T-MAP sensor. Rather than prying up on those, they break easy. I just kind of angle down and out. So unplug your oil sensor because there's an 11 mil bolt in the corner here that you got to get to and the rest are nuts. There's a harness that clips in right here. So when you take it out, just make sure all your gaskets made it with it. In the corner, there's this little metal bracket and there's a little push pin here. The metal bracket just goes in right here and that little push pin is right here. This was clipped into the bottom of the manifold. On some cars, it can be really hard to remove, but on this car, it came out easy. I could just do it by hand, but you may have to push down here and here to get it out. Now we have got a clear access to the HPFB. I'm going to disconnect the battery soon because once you release the fuel line and you're right beside the starter, if you spark that, it could be a fire. For now, I'm going to clip this out. You can see the electrical connector for the HPFB. Considering I had my intake manifold off, I took the opportunity to clean the valves. I have another video on my channel where I show you how to use this. Uh, it works a lot better when you're just doing a maintenance cleaning when you have about 30% of your valves covered in carbon. So spray this, suck, let it cool up, uh, sit for five minutes, suck it out, do it three times per valve and you won't even have to do scraping, nothing will just come out perfectly clean. It's a good time to do it. I use this battery filler to suck out the fluid in between. It worked out nicely. So there's the HPFP. Going to undo the bolt that feeds it, low pressure line. Almost forgot on the fastener side, I'm gonna remove that right there because that feeds positive power to the starter and alternator and you can cause a spark if you touch your ratchet on anything and you could cause a fire since the fuel lines will be open. So you want to either disconnect your battery at the back of the car or take this off, but don't touch anything. Don't short this out on anything while you're doing it. All right, no longer in danger of sparks or fuel being ignited. Remove this 11 mil right here. Removing this bracket. That just supports the wire that goes between your starter and alternator. Disconnecting the bolt that holds your low pressure line to your to the block. And here we're gonna push this in. Removing that line. So down in here, that's your low pressure line. You basically push this in and push the line in toward it so you can pull it out. So using a five mil Allen going after the three bolts that hold the HPFP to the vacuum pump. They don't seem to be very tight. considering removing a filter out of the HPFB, like I said, I'm installing the low pressure filter. So we got to remove this line. That means jacking up the car and looking from underneath for where that other end of that line is to insert that. So I'm going to do that before I move on to anything else. So here's the low pressure line. We may have to bend this to clear the starter, but so normally you have a connection like that. And then it goes like this. 
plastic retainer snaps in, locks in, and then you push in this plastic retainer to remove, remove the line. On this one, you insert the line, looks like it's just into a threaded hole, like so. But then you slip this piece over it. And then you use a wrench to screw this part on right by where your foot would normally be if you're on the footrest down in there. All right, so here's a line removed from the car. Underneath, it has this little plastic uh, clip. Okay, so that clip went flying and I don't feel like finding it right now, but I'm gonna go underneath the car and show you where I'm working. It's pretty hard to show given the limited amount of room, but right here, this line right here is where that snapped into. You have these studs right here here and then one up in there that this metal bracket went on to. I pulled that down and out of the way after removing a couple 10 mil nuts that hold that up. And then I pushed in, I removed that plastic retaining clip, pushed the line in and then pushed the blue plastic piece into the line to pop it off of this plastic line right here. And it's very, very tight down here. So what I'm going to do is insert that line and then I'll meet you back on the top. So I realized that it makes more sense that that filter, the plastic side that clicks in goes down and then the other side that you thread in goes up. Okay, over here, in the back side in this line, I used a pick tool and I pulled out this filter. That would impede flow. So that's out, that's where you have to put the new filter in. Next thing you wanna do is transfer this O-ring the adapter so we'll go back to the car now i have the o-ring installed in the new pump so i brought the pump behind it using the supplied longer bolts we're gonna insert them So that's the HPFP mounted. I'm going to run the soft line that goes to the top. So we'll be done with that. And then we'll focus on the hard line that goes from low pressure. Okay, so this bracket that supports that cable down there to go to your starter, that's not going to be able to go back on the car. So far as I understand, uh, there may be a revision to this line to make it a little better. It do does have to 90 degree angles on the corner. So that may be the most updated line, but just keep in mind that, you know, I'm kind of trying to get those in the ideal position before I lock them down this line here. So I can still get my oil filter cap off easy and do my usual maintenance without it being a big deal. Now this low pressure line, if you screw it onto the back of the pump now, it may bump into the starter unless we bend it downward. So I'm going to play with that now, see how much modifications this is going to require. It looks like it has to come down, put it in a vise. It's got to come this way and down a bit. I'm going to go modify it and come back. So I just tried modifying it. It was very, very malleable, very easy. No kinks or any issues on this line. So that wasn't a big deal at all. Okay, so the low side of the HPFB is now plumbed. Took some finagling, but got that in place. You will have to do a similar amount of finagling and adjustments to get around your lines but it is doable and that line is surprisingly malleable just watch you don't kink it if you have to go on a tight radius maybe put it in your vise and squeeze whichever side may have flattened a bit to make it round again i did that but i didn't even really deform it so it looks perfectly normal so i just put a zip tie on that because it looks like we may not have the length to be able to clip it onto the bottom of the manifold. It's definitely not pretty under here now that we've done what we've done, but it's still functional. Okay, so I'm just gonna time lapse through putting the manifold back on, and then we'll come back when we're ready to start the car. This bracket's gonna have to go now. Okay, so as you saw, you probably want to leave this 
fuel line disconnected until you got the manifold in place and then you can kind of tighten down the bolts to shape it to where you want it to end up. And there's no way you could use that lower bracket. It would have touched on where the fuel pump sits now, but the zip tie is keeping this nice and secure. I'm gonna put the manifold bolts back on now and then I'm gonna put the throttle body on. I'll put the torque rating on the screen here for what these are supposed to be. I know my uh, torque wrench is screwed up, so I'm going to have to go by fuel, but you guys uh, will be able to follow. If you want to basically start from the inside and work your way out, and then I'll put the torque rating on the screen. So as an FYI, this is pretty brittle. I tried to notch it to make clearance for the line and it cracked easily. I scored it with an X-Acto knife to mark it, but it's, I guess that helped it kind of snap in the right spot. But be careful when you notch that, use a Dremel. All right, so it may not run that great right now because I just cleaned the valves. They could be fouled out a bit, but I'm gonna give it a first start. All right, it's running nice and smooth. Everything's just normal, what you would expect. You can't really tell any difference uh, just under normal use. I'm gonna take it for a quick drive and see if it feels normal under normal driving, and then I'll come back and conclude. Just got back from a test drive. Everything feels perfectly smooth and fine. You would never know. There's no noises, no nothing. The car doesn't have an updated tune at this point. It has the same tune that was on there prior, but the car can auto adjust anyway. There's a regulating valve inside the HPFP that will naturally breed off excess pressure anyway. But the reason you need to tell your tuner is to dial in your air fuel ratio as well as have it so that that valve opens more than 60%. I believe it only opens 60%. And they have to command it to open at least 80% to allow for ad the additional flow to be useful. I'm waiting for that update from my tuner. And for you guys wondering how effective was this mod, just tune in uh, in a little bit. I'm going to get my updated tune and go for my dyno and you can see how much power I can make on straight direct injection. All right, guys, that's going to show you how to install the HPFP upgrade for your N54. It's a much easier to install solution than other companies' offerings. You can make probably up to about 700 wheel horsepower with this four times kit. The three times kit is going to be plenty for most people. I only got it so I can show you proof of concept. And if there's going to be any failures, we'll, we'll find out a little bit sooner since we're overdriving it four times but so far so good. It just seems and drives normal. So check the description for more information on the company that's making this. Eventually there'll be a link where you can buy it really soon, probably less than a couple weeks, as well as that fuel filter upgrade. So it's really exciting to have an offering out there that allows you to run straight direct injection with an easy install. Um, hopefully it lasts for many miles and there's no adverse side effects from it. It's a new product, so you know what? There's always a couple risks, but I'm here to take those risks and inform my audience. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully within a couple weeks, we'll have the dyno video. We're showing you how much power this pump can support and to show you how port injection is not needed and it's kind of primitive compared to this. So yeah, uh, look out for that soon. Hoping I can maybe Eclipse goes to 600 wheel. We'll see. I'll be happy with 550. If this is the first video you've seen of mine, consider subscribing for more content like this. I upload regularly. <laughs> Wow.